this question is asking, there is an objection to the government of Imam al-Mahdi, meaning to the concept of the government of the Mahdi. The objection is that believing in the government of Imam al-Mahdi contradicts three very important human values, democracy, justice and freedom. An example that the person who wrote this question is saying, let's take democracy as an example. When the Imam reappears, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed him, there is no democracy. People will not be given the opportunity to choose who's going to lead them, to choose what kind of laws will be applied on them. So there will be no democracy. And as a result, there won't be human freedom. Because when you cannot choose your own laws and your own leaders, then there is no freedom over here. And where is the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by not giving us freedom? So the concept of Mahdawiyya, of the Mahdawi government, defies these three human values. This is the objection. How do we respond to this? When it comes to democracy, my dear brothers and sisters, we have to understand a very important point. What is Islam's position on democracy? When God has chosen a leader for you, there is no room for democracy. Because God created you for a purpose, He knows you, He knows what's good for you, and He has chosen an infallible leader who does not oppress, who doesn't do things for personal interests. Of course there's no room for democracy. In fact, there's a clear verse in the Holy Quran that when God and the Messenger choose something for you, you don't have the khiyara, the option. You have to sallim. وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمَ You have to submit to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for you. So Allah has chosen Imam al-Mahdi as our leader. He's infallible, he's just, he's compassionate, he knows what's good for us. Why do you need democracy when God has shown you what's best for you? We need democracy to protect our rights, right? So you don't have a dictator rule over you and oppress you. When you have an infallible ma'soom imam or leader governing you, then you're not scared or concerned of your rights being violated. In fact, the imam is most protective of human rights. Yes, in the absence of the imam, we could make the case that in, within a, a, a proper format, you can have democracy. By the way, democracy cannot be unrestrained without any limits. There must be limits to democracy. If now the majority of people decide to elect um, someone who's corrupt, someone who has no principles and values, what do you think will happen to the society? There must be checks and balances. So democracy has its shortcomings too. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for you a leader, of course there's no democracy because Allah knows what's best for you. And if you're wondering, wait, wait a minute, where is my freedom? Your freedom lies in an imam who's ma'soom to rule you. Because only an infallible imam can give you your true freedom. How? What is the definition of freedom? Does freedom mean you could do whatever you want? No laws, no limits? That's a jungle. Freedom, in this definition, that's a jungle. You go to the jungle, there's no law. It's the law of the powerful. The powerful eats the weak. That's the law of the jungle. Freedom means laws that protect your interests. And these laws, just laws, come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know these free countries, for example, the US, Canada. These are considered free countries compared to many other countries, third world countries or some dictatorships. Do you think there's no law here in this land? How many laws do you think there are in the United States? Can anyone guess? 66,000 laws. Where's freedom? In fact, the United States has laws more than many, many third world countries. 
Take an average country in Africa, somewhere else, that is backwards, there's human suffering, there's wars, there's robbery, <laughs> right? They have much, much less laws. The more laws, the more your rights are protected. So when Allah has determined these laws and He gives them to Imam al-Mahdi, that's to protect you. And that's why the, the religion that guarantees the most freedom is the religion of Islam. These laws don't restrict your freedom, they protect your freedom. Sometimes Westerners don't understand this. For example, Islam says no to alcohol. Islam bans alcohol, it's haram. That's a God, godly law, why? Why? There's a reason. Do we in the West, do we believe in, hu in, in the sanctity of human life or no? When we choose to, yes. And when we don't, no. If now a million people die in Yemen, who cares? Who cares? It's, not, it's none of my business. I'm not going to do anything. It's a problem there between this country and that country. If people die because of alcohol, nobody cares. Do you know in the United States every year how many people die because of drunk driving? Can someone guess? Can you give me a figure? 45,000. 45,000 Americans die every single year because of drunk driving. This is just drunk driving. Sometimes a lot of accidents uh, happen when people are drunk and they're not driving, they're doing something else. This is just drunk driving. Brothers and sisters, when Islam says alcohol is haram, Islam is saving 45,000 lives. That's not freedom? This is in one country. In Europe, they probably have even more. They have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with, with their beer in Europe. If you've been there, you've seen that. Last year, I was in Germany. Literally, in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, they have this jug this big of beer. God knows what the accident rates there are. Islam is saving 45,000 lives. That's freedom. Yes, it's a law. But this law is actually taking you to freedom. So Imam al-Mahdi through his divine system that Allah has given him will protect human rights. And that's the beauty of his government. That's freedom. And that's something we all look forward to inshallah.